Let's guess who the Mr. Right, Caller is. Hey, Mr. Caller, thank you for calling in. Hello. Go ahead, Matt. All right, Mystery Caller, uh, Matt Vaskersian here, American Television. I'll try to reveal your identity for the uh, millions of viewers we have this morning. Are you a current Major League Baseball player? No. Are you a former Major League Baseball player? No. Oh, boy, that narrows it down. Uh, so let's see. I got 98% um, You got, like, population. two more questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you an entertainer? Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, are you a musician? Heavens no. Heavens no on the musician. Are you an actor? Are you a TV actor? I have been. Have been a TV actor. <laughs> All right, I, last one. I last no one. Clue. Uh, I got no clue. Were you ever in an episode of Sanford and Son? Not yet. Okay, so I don't know. I don't, but I, you did Seinfeld, right? Yes. What? All right, Come Mr. On. Collar, let's reveal who it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, hey, that was pretty good, Buck. Pretty good. Oh, you like my Ernie Schnurber's voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so worried about him knowing who you were first thing you said hi. I just knew he'd be all over. Not with the voice change. That was good. Buck, good morning. How are we looking, guys? How are we looking? Uh, we're looking good. We're excited about your club. We're excited about uh, having you back in uniform as much as we miss you around here. And, uh, you know, I mean, look, nothing but love so far from what you guys have done. Give us your uh, kind of your thumbnail thoughts on how camp has gone so far. Well, I think that's why everybody loves spring training. It's such an upbeat time. You're always thinking about best-case scenarios, and some guy's going to make big strides from last year, and someone's going to actually stay healthy. I got to tell you, yesterday was fun. There were moments that I kind of stepped back in the dugout, getting to watch uh, Jake and Max pitch yesterday to a full house, and, uh, you know, all felt right with the world yesterday. With our fans, you know, we had uh, a lot of people very excited to, to uh, watch those guys work. How, how did that come about, Buck, where you lined those two up yesterday? Why, and why? Well, we, you know, we kept looking at uh, a way to separate them. If you look at uh, playing the National League East, we have so many teams down here with the Nationals and the uh, and the Marlins. And, of course, it, we, just you don't like this late to starting the season to have those guys pitching against them, so you're trying to solve a lot of things. And finally, we kind of said, well, what if they pitch together? And uh, they didn't want to pitch on the back on Triple A game. They wanted to have the bells and whistles of a game with people in the stands, and it was just the best way baseball way way to solve it. And uh, we're going to play a six inning game in camp day today to pick up the relievers that would have normally pitched yesterday. Hey, so you've had uh, a combination like this before with with two star pitchers like that, and they push each other. Uh, how do you see this Degrom and Scherzer? Who's push, pushing whom? Uh, because of what they've done, and it's pretty obvious they don't need pushing. You know, they're sure. self-pushers, and uh, uh, they don't need us to bring somebody in here that has a good track record to be pushed any more than they, they do. You know, Max Max called last night, uh, yesterday after Jake was finishing up. Jake had about five pitches left, and we had another reliever to finish the inning. Jake called up. I'm sorry, Max called up and said, uh, hey, I'll come in and relieve DeGrom. I'd be, you know, he, he was fine to come in. Can you imagine Max running across the field from the bullpen to relieve Jake? But uh, The I had crowd to had to have gone nuts. No, it didn't happen because uh, Jake was able to finish his inning. But uh, that would have been fun. Hey, so, oh, I was no, gonna, go ahead. Go I was going to say, so what, um, you know, who, what young player? You know, we know about Marte. We know Celan Dorr starting to swing the bat. What young player has stood out and caught your attention? Well, you know, because I finally figured out that young players are actually listening um, in today's world. I'm real careful about that. I'd say all the above, whether it's Beatty, Alvarez, Mauricio, uh, some of the young pitchers. Uh, you know, it's funny. We, uh, we were doing the pitch com on the sleeve where they push the buttons, getting ready in case they put it in. And all the catchers have been using it with the earpiece in the, uh, I should say, headpiece in the hat, you know, with five guys using it, second base and shortstop center fielder catcher pitcher but we couldn't get the sleeve to fit over Alvarez's wrist so <laughs> I, I kind of got my attention that we were going to have to get our own sleeve for him hey Buck who uh, who on your roster and you, you know you knew so many of these guys as players for such a long time but who on your roster have you discovered has a skill set that you weren't quite as familiar with even if it's something like 
you know, one of your coaches, like, I don't know, like Eric Chavez is a great chess player. What have you learned about somebody? Uh, you know, I've had a lot of things verified that, that you thought about. You know, you listen to people tell you about them, but you want to make up your, your own mind. I got to tell you, I, I don't want to embarrass anybody. I, there's some things they tell me in private that I really don't want to put out there unless they wish to. But I, I got to tell you, they, they've been as advertised. I don't think I've been around a harder working group. I can't get them to come out of games. It's almost like I have to. I have another bat, another bat. I won't play another inning. They have got a real sense of urgency. And I, don't, I wouldn't say that's been a surprise, but it's been very – very uh, humbling to see how they go about their work. Joel Sherman heard that uh, you were on the show, and even though he's not scheduled to join us for another 10 minutes, he wanted to ask you a question. Joel, take it away. Uh oh. Uh, I'm not going to fake a voice and be your mystery caller, Buck. Uh, but uh, I, I just wonder uh, you were hired during the lockout, and you weren't allowed to talk to your 40 man roster players. I wonder about the balance of getting a team ready in three and a half weeks, but also trying to bond and get to know them, uh, it, you know, people you're going to have to be with and motivate for the next six, seven months. Well, I think the big mistake, Joe, you'll make is trying to force relationships. It's not like you take the Grom and Scherzer and make them locker beside each other. Are you kidding me? They're grown men. They can locker wherever they want to. And, you know, I just want to make sure that, uh, you, know, you, you take it slow. It's very much like the physical part of spring training. Uh, yeah, we could have played Marte probably two or three days ago, but, you know, maybe he starts a, a little later, which he's not going to. He's right on schedule now. But, you know, you, you try to keep the end game in mind and, and the relationship. You try to take one or two every day, and uh, you listen instead of talk because, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of lip service goes around in players – you know, the sincerity comes through with players and, you know, you can't force a relationship. you got to take it as it comes. And, uh, you know, phoniness shows itself very quickly in the big leagues. You're, you're around each other so much. And you know what I found? And because this is the first spring that kind of baseball, you've been able to freely move around and talk. And, uh, you know, we've taken, still taken a lot of caution, but I think guys are really feeling a freedom of uh, getting back into a real baseball environment, at least the routine in which they've been used to. And, and uh, that's why it's been so upbeat for everybody in spring, not just us. Hey, Buck, uh, I know, I know you got to get going, so i got two more questions for you. One, uh, you got Al Leiter in camp right now. Keith Hernandez was there earlier, uh, really bringing these guys in. What's the purpose behind that, and what made you think of doing this? Well, I, I'm not the only one that has done it in the past here. These guys have been here before, but, uh, you know, Al's here this morning. He's got a full lather going already. I think he's going to try to throw today. <laughs> you know, we got David Wright coming in next week. Mookie has been here for a while. Mookie actually got in the trenches and got after it. And uh, uh, just having them around and um, knowing that they're very important to us and I want our players to, to embrace our history. You know, we're not going to take a back seat to, to anyone, especially in the year where we're going to have our old timers game. There's been over 65 players commit to it. It's going to be a special day. We're retiring Keith's number this year. I mean, this is a special time uh, with the Mets and our ownership has been so supportive of all these things. You know, they're, they're not free and uh, you know, willing to, to back everything we're trying to do. And now comes the responsibility and the accountability of, of delivering what we need to deliver. Hey, Buck, before you go, we just want uh, our, our viewers to listen to one thing, and then, and then I think I have an answer to the question that you asked of the media about a week ago. Roll that, guys. They got a drink here called the Voodoo Bucket. Have you seen that? No. Oh. What's in it? Where is it? My first thought is hot chicken wings or something, you know? <laughs> It's not. Let's put it this way. This it's a drink that comes with four straws. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> here's, here's the answer to the question, I no, think. If you had a drink with four straws, uh, Billy Martin, Adam Jones, Dom Cheedy, and Will Clark. Are those the four straws that you drink with? And there it is. He's got the bucket. Someone brought it in that night. I will I, now. I know people are actually listening to me. I'm, I'm going to proceed with caution. There is a voodoo bucket, <laughs> and it's it appropriately named. I'm told by the people that uh, you know they test stuff before they bring it in here in case someone's trying to poison me. And this was a form of poison. <laughs> trust me. Buck, we appreciate the uh, visit, man. It's good to see you. Uh, you don't need us to wish you good luck, but we will anyway. And we can't wait to see uh, you guys on the field come April 7th. Thanks for having me. We've, we have some tough times. We're going to import the voodoo bucket. Love it.